Hey, welcome back everybody, Mr. Taylor. Uh, working again, Unit 5 of our textbook. We are at Lesson 13.1. want to talk about properties of dilation. First thing we want to look at is exploring these particular dilations. Now, you are required to use a ruler to measure the segments of two triangles and record these measures and ratio in a table. Um, you will be required to do that. I'm going to pre-measure it and use that information to uh, to show you. But you know, you do you know you have options stopping the video and taking a look. Um, key vocabularies: dilation and center of dilation. Well. The author t shows us these group, or should I say, these group of rockets. And um, actually it said that the 12 astronauts that was uh, sit placed on the moon, that these rockets was controlled by the Johnson Space Center in Houston. I think the only thing that, that this has to do with what we're doing is they're showing you different models of the spaceship. So it says the toy models at the right are scaled down replica of the Saturn V rocket that powered the moon flights. Each replica is a transformation called a, called a dilation. As you know, we have, according to the book, we have been studying other transformation, uh, which is translation, rotation, and reflection. These are called rigid transformation, or as we said in the beginning of the study, isometries. Now, the reason why is because the shape, the size, should I say, don't, um, don't change. No matter what happened to these three, it remains the same size. Dilation, on the other hand, it's going to change the size, but it will not change the shape. So you just want to keep that in mind. Also, every dilation has a fixed point, and that is called a center of dilation. Okay? Uh, and it's located where the lines connecting the corresponding parts of figures intersect. You will learn a little bit later that dilations are either enlarged or there are or should I say enlargements or reductions. When a dilation is enlarged you will learn later that it is greater than one, greater than one, and or should we say the scale factor that enlarged it is greater than one and when a dilation is a reduction the scale factor that reduces it is less than one. Okay, so let's get going and take a look at what they want us to do. So we got triangle R prime, S prime, T prime, which is the big one in green. It says it's a dilation of the smaller one in blue, R, S, T. Then it says point C, this little point right here, is what we call uh, the center of dilation. So that going here, going here, and notice that S, the line runs directly through S and S prime. So what do we do with this? Well, you have your book. Well, you can uh, measure with a ruler the particular segments. So as you can see here, we have segment uh, C and R prime. So that means you're going to start here at this point and you're going all the way up here. You're going to measure that. Then, get that out of the way, you're going to measure CR. So now you're going to start here and you're going to measure from here to here. Okay. Then you're going to put the ratio of what you measured which is CR prime over 
CR. Okay, now after you do that, then we'll go to C and S prime. Take your measurements. Then measure CS. And then again, go back and put in the ratio of uh, CS prime over CS. Lastly, you take CT, uh, CT prime, and measure from C to T prime. Put that measure there. Then from C to T, put that measure there, and then create the ratio. That means put CT prime over C T prime. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, what's the issue with this ratio thing? If you can just maybe remember from uh, middle school, uh, well, not you in middle school, from seventh grade or sixth grade, where it said that your ratio for dilations was new. over original. So that is your formula. I could have wrote that a little bit better. Or you can say, if that's too easy for you, you can always say uh, image over pre-image. Okay. So that's why we're using uh, CR prime and CR, CS prime and CS, CT prime and, C and CT. So just keep that in mind as you go through setting up your um, particular uh, ratios. Okay. Then it says measure the car, measure and record the corresponding sides of the triangle. So you'll have R, where am I? R prime, there we go. R prime and S prime measure. Then measure R and S. These are corresponding sides. Let me put this up here so we can see it. So, um, right here. Uh, please ignore this little text on the side. I had to really get this in so you can see it. So you're going you're gonna to measure uh, the corresponding sides, which is R prime, S prime, and R and S. Then you're going to put the ratio. Again, notice, see the primes are there? So that's the new RS is the original. Because now you can see this is a large. It went from smaller to, to here. Then you're going to do the same thing with S and T. Or should I say S prime, T prime. And then you're going to measure ST. Put up your ratio with S prime T prime over ST. Then you'll do uh, the slanted, which is R prime T prime, and then measure RT, and then uh, create your ratio of R prime T prime over RT. Then it said write a conjecture based on the ratio in the table, uh, then go on and measure the corresponding angles and describe your results. So since we got a little bit of an understanding of what you need to do here, go ahead and stop it, uh, create it in your in your notes or your book, and, and see um, how well you do. Come back when you finish. Okay. Second thing I need you to do is look at the triangle. So you're going to first look at this triangle, which is the pre-image. I'm sorry, the image R S T. That's the original. Okay, this is the, the pre-image. So we're going to look at RST, and then you're going to look at R prime, S prime, T prime, which is the image, and you want to know, are they similar? So again, think about what similar figures are about, and then explain to me here. And then you want to compare the orientation of a figure with the orientation of its dilation. Orientation. Remember, orientation is where these vertices are, what happened here, did they change, okay? Again, go ahead and stop it, get into that, come back. All right, so you should be back, and let's see what we have. 
when I measured uh, CR prime, I got five centimeters. No, I'm not using the inches. I'm using the centimeter part of the ruler. Uh, CR, I got 2.5. Hmm. Let's keep an eye on that. Uh, so my ratio would have been 5 over 2. So my first ratio, well, it's just showing me 2. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm kind of keeping my eyes on my time. So my first ratio here where it says C R prime over C R, that ratio would have been 5 over 2. Okay, or should I say 2.5? Sorry. Which gives us, when we divide, and that's what you want to do, simplify, it's going to get 2. Well, the thing of it is, if these are similar figures, all of these ratios should be the same. Okay, we should remember that from 6th and 7th grade, but if they are similar figures, all of these ratios should be the same. So then let's look at CS. It says CS is C S prime is 4 and CS is 2. So let's take a look again at our C S prime and C S and we get 4 over 2 which is again 2. And looking at the next one, which is C T prime, we get six, and then C T is three, and the ratio will give me two. Same way we did that one. So then when we imagine, now notice this part, notice these. This is this is the important key right here with these ratios. Two, two and two. All three ratios are the same so that's telling us it's similar. So let's go down here and see when we measure the corresponding side length of the triangle see do we get two. Well R prime S prime is two and uh, R S is one. Okay what did we get for the wow we got two. S prime T prime is two S T is one we got two. And again, the same thing with the last one, R prime T prime and RT, we still get a ratio of two. So on your conjecture, you should have had some similar to the ratios all equal two. So that means that the side lengths are proportional. Then when we look at the corresponding uh, angles, uh, they're also if you measure the corresponding angles and describe your results, you'll find out that these are congruent. Okay? So just take your time, make sure you write that down, stop it. Understand what we got. It. Now, your reflection. Would you say that this particular triangle, that the pre image and the, and the image is similar? Well, yes. Then it asks you, how do you know? Their corresponding sides are proportional and their corresponding angles are congruent. That means the same. This means similar as far as the ratio is concerned. That's what proportion means, is the ratio. So here, it asks us to compare the orientation of a figure with the orientation of its dilation. And as you see, there's R, there's R, there's S. There's S, there's T, there's T. So let me let me make sure you can see this. I don't know whether you can see it with me moving this pen, but there's R, there's R prime, there's S, there's S prime, there's T, and there's T prime. So orientation didn't same, didn't change. So dilation has the same orientation. All right. Pretty simple. If you didn't understand it, just go back through it. This is Mr. Taylor and I'll talk to you soon.